Hi, this is Kathy with Barefoot Mountain School of Herbs. Today we're going to talk about an invasive plant that is very useful. Uh, it's called Japanese knotweed. Now whether you realize it or not, you've probably seen this plant about everywhere. It grows all up and down the uh, creeks and stream banks. Um, it, get, it grows about a foot a day starting in the spring um, and then it blooms in the summer and it becomes very thick and almost impossible to get rid of. So when we have something that invasive, you have to start thinking why would God give us you know so much of this and as it turns out it is very useful our creator of course knows what he's doing um, in japan they don't use a lot of herbicides to try to get rid of japanese knotweed like we do here they actually eat it the stalks when they're young and tender in the spring can be eaten like rhubarb or jams and jellies made out of them but what we are really interested in medicinally are the roots there's been quite a few studies on japanese knotweed and they found it to be antiviral um, it's active against lyme's disease uh, it's good with heart disease it's very good as a heart tonic uh, cognitive diseases like alzheimer's and dementia uh, it's very useful for gastrointestinal issues. Um, there's some studies that found it lowers blood sugar in diabetics. And they have found that uh, it can prevent some cancers. A lot of this can be attributed to its high resveratrol content and its trans resveratrol, which makes it very useful uh, and available to the body. Uh, it also contains Emodin and polydatin, which are two other uh, very useful antioxidants that uh, give it some of its really good um, medicinal actions. Uh, so if you're ever wondering what to do with the Japanese knotweed, just remember that studies suggest it's active against coronaviruses and many other viruses, stops cytokine storms and regulates immune responses, active against Lyme's disease and associated tick-borne diseases, decreases cholesterol and triglycerides, antithrombotic, mildly laxative, anti-inflammatory, decreases insulin resistance, protects myocardial heart cells, cancer preventative, prevent and possibly reverse Alzheimer's and dementia, and it's liver and lung protective. So now that I've talked you into Japanese knotweed, we're going to talk a little bit about how to find it and identify it. Japanese knotweed roots are um, strongest in the early spring, so that's when we're going to look for it. Um, you just look along creek banks. And the first thing you're going to see is just a big bunch of uh, mess, like you see here, just sticks sticking up. Or you might see uh, a bunch of stuff leaning over because people try to kill it with uh, the herbicides and stuff. But if you go on up in there a little bit closer, you'll see uh, the little sprouts coming out amongst all the sticks. Um, they're little reddish uh, green sprouts to begin with and you'll see they're segmented. They look a little bit like bamboo except they've got the uh, green with the red looking veins to them. Now one of the reasons I told you about the benefits of the knotweed before I told you about processing is because it is such a pain to process. Um, the reason they think that they call it knotweed is because they have these great big roots on them that look like big knots and they have these big uh, uh, roots on the end of that so they're difficult to dig up you'll need a, a good big shovel and um, just you know it's just a lot of work to dig up and then you want to get the yellow part off of the bark so you want the outer bark uh, you'll need to do that with a good stout knife. My husband gave me this, uh, he, it's a shop knife that he made and he let me borrow it and it's so cute he thinks he's going to get it back. <laughs> but uh, you want to get that uh, yellow orangish part off and get it into as small pieces as possible. 
then I put mine into a jar and I did a folk tincture. I didn't weigh it out. I just put it in a jar and I barely covered it with 100% ethanol. I didn't add any water to it since it was a fresh root and it was already wet. So, um, and then of course it's going to sit. I'm going to shake it every day for about six weeks and then I'll press it and strain it out. And that's about all there is to it. I hope everybody will make themselves some Japanese knotweed tincture and uh, enjoy it. And you all have a great day and God bless you.